Imagine thinking that Russia deserves the United States credit for winning the Second World War rather than the blame. This idea that Russia is somehow the hero of the Second World War is just asinine on every single level. And it gets repeated way too often. First off, do not get me wrong. American exceptionalism is generally awful and wrong. First World War is a great example of that. We take way more credit than we're due because basically the entire war, we sent them, you know, money and guns and shit. And then when everybody was, you know, on their deathbed, we just kind of showed up and we're like, pow, 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 whoo, we won. But if we're going to give one country majority credit for winning the Second World War, the United States won the Second World War. And Russia would have been fucking steamrolled without us. And honestly, we probably should have let them because they deserved it, but we'll get into that at the end. First, what does the Second World War look like without any U.S. involvement? Germany invades Poland in 1939. The Blitzkrieg had defeated all mainland European opposition forces by June 1940. England is is the lone holdout on the European continent because Germany can't get across the English Channel. But neither can England to launch any meaningful counteroffenses. Now Germany's forces still have a little bit going on in Africa that they're tied up in, but all they really had to worry about was some nuisance bombing from England, which wasn't being very effective because even though the RAF had some great bombers, they didn't have shit for effective fighter escorts, which either meant really heavy bomber losses for daytime raids or really ineffective nighttime raids. Don't get me wrong, Spitfire was an incredible aircraft, but it was designed to shoot down bombers, not escort them. Now how long England could have held out without US aid is hard to say. They did have an incredibly powerful navy that would have helped keep them supplied for some time. At that point, without any US intervention, the war was already over. Now let's say in this hypothetical situation, Hitler still moves forward with Operation Barbarossa and invades Russia in June 1941. What the fuck were they gonna do about it? Now people get the idea that Russia is the big hero of the war because they sustained the greatest casualties. But the Zap Brannigan method of sending wave after wave of your own men, women, and children at the enemy hoping to what, exceed their pre set kill limits is not a great battle strategy. Also, shooting your own people to try to motivate them to shoot the other people is not a great battle strategy. No joke, as a Russian soldier, those are your two options. March forward and get shot by the Germans or turn around and get shot by your own people. Russia didn't even have enough guns at the onset to supply all their soldiers, let alone enough ammunition to even supply all the guns that they did have. The initial battle strategy was give one guy a gun at the front and then when he gets shot, the next guy picks it up. Uh, but you know, don't try to shoot him too much. Club him when you can. We need to save ammo. If you think that's bad, they're Tank divisions were even worse. Despite Russian propaganda heralding the T-34 as like one of the greatest fighting machines of all time, it's arguably the worst widely used tank of the Second World War. They didn't come with radios, so the tank commanders couldn't effectively communicate with his division in battle. The turret system was outdated and completely inaccurate. The Christie suspension was unstable and completely unsuitable for anything other than road use. And I don't know if you've seen tank battles, but they're usually not on a road. Put the fuel tanks inside the already cramped crew compartment, so that meant if there was any penetration in the tank, pretty much everybody always died and the tank was a total loss. Not to mention, piloting these rolling death traps were very poorly trained tank crews. But luckily for the Russian tank crews, the majority of the time they didn't even have to worry about being completely slaughtered by the far superior German tanks because 60 to 70 percent of those piles of shit broke down before they ever made it to the battlefield. It was so bad they strapped spare transmissions to the back of the things. Motors on average needed an overhaul before 100 hours of service. But the Russians were like, hey, 100 hours, that should get you about 120 miles. It's reliable enough since most of the tank get destroyed within 40 miles. Their air force wasn't much better, their pilots were way worse than the Luftwaffe's, superior planes, and way better trained pilots. So how did Russia not get completely overrun within months like Europe did? Oh, say can you see? The United States sent them 400,000 trucks and jeeps, 14,000 airplanes, 13,000 tanks, 8,000 tractors. We sent them engineers and raw materials to build factories and railroads. Soviets wouldn't have accomplished shit without massive amounts of U.S. help. But even if that's all we did, would the Soviets have won then without us actually entering the war? The answer is still a pretty resounding no. Remember, the only other opposition that Germany needed to worry about was England over there hanging out on the island, nuisance bombing them. Because they're not really fighting a two-front war anymore, they can now focus all of their manufacturing power, their ground forces, and their far superior air force at Russia as a whole. Our aid to the USSR slowed down the Germans, but it damn sure wouldn't have stopped them. See, the war was only won for a few very specific reasons, all tied to Japan attack attacking us and us entering the war. First is because we suddenly needed a long-range bomber escort. So we built one that would end up becoming the P-51D Mustang. And since we get by with a little help from our friends, and getting high with a little help from our friends, we stuck a Rolls-Royce V-12 Merlin in it, and we had now a long-range bomber escort that could go anywhere our bombers wanted to go. As a result, the U.S. showed up in England with a shit pile of B-17s and P-51s and started daylight bombing the lights out of Germany. Suddenly, Germany needs to use its Luftwaffe to defend home 
home rather than attack the Soviets, and were bombing Germany's factory, factory workers, and military installations out of existence, making it a lot harder for Germany to keep resupplying its war effort. Our Navy enters the chat and starts deleting Germany from it, making Germany's resupply efforts a lot harder and England's much easier. Wars are won and lost on logistics, and logistically speaking, we started kicking their ass. Germany is now fully engulfed in a full-blown two-front war once again. Now, the second big thing with us fighting Japan that was instrumental in winning the war in Europe, amphibious landings. Turns out when you're fighting a war on the other side of the world that requires invading a new island every week, you get really fucking good at landing invasion forces. In fact, the United States is the only country in modern warfare that can effectively land amphibious invasion forces. It's why Germany couldn't hop across the channel to take England, and it's why China was never able to retake Taiwan. And so the U.S. just shows up on the beach in France and goes, knock, knock, motherfucker, and carried out arguably the most complicated and impressive military action in world history. And I want to say this was done with lots of help from England and Canada and Australia. All the allies were instrumental, but it was the U.S.'s knowledge of amphibious landings, its Navy, and its Marine Corps that made D-Day a reality. Now, Allied boots are back on the ground on mainland Europe, and the war is over for Hitler at that moment. It's just a matter of time. People argue that had D-Day failed, the Russians still would have beat Germany. It just would have taken longer. Also highly unlikely to be true, because Germany was advancing tech faster than anybody else at the time. By the end of the war, Germany had ballistic missiles and an operational jet fighter and an operational jet bomber, and they had a nuclear program. Well, they were further behind in their nuke program than we thought they were, so I don't know if they ever would have been successful with that, but another six months to a year of R&D and production on their jets in the war would have looked very different. Their bomber was untouchable by any Allied aircraft. It wouldn't have needed escorts. A fleet of their jet fighters would have decimated Allied bomber groups. They would have had complete air superiority. The only reason that that didn't happen is because the D-Day invasion crippled Germany before they could build adequate numbers to join the fight. And lastly, had the war drug on any longer, and the U.S. had not fought and beat Japan, Japan likely would have advanced through China to the Russian border and declared war on Russia, making them fight a two-front war. And speaking of Japan, the U.S. beat them all by her fucking lonesome, all while we're on the other side of the fucking world kicking Germany's ass at the same goddamn time. So you can't say we didn't win the war when we defeated one of the Axis powers literally by ourselves. The U.S. is indisputably the MVP of the Second World War. But even if none of that were true, you still can't say that Russia saved Europe because Russia was fucking responsible for starting the goddamn war. See, Hitler only started the war because he made a pact with Stalin that they would invade Poland together, and then after the war, they would split up all of the European countries amongst themselves. Russia was the Nazis' ally when the war started. Russia invaded Poland with Germany. Russia murdered 22,000 Polish officers. There's absolutely no way Germany would have started that war without a minimum of a non-aggression pact from Russia. And the only reason Russia decided to fight Germany was because Germany attacked them when they were running out of resources. So no, Russia didn't save Europe, it fucking destroyed it. And the only credit they deserve in defeating the Nazis is keeping them busy until we showed up. Now the US did a lot of shitty things regarding the war before, during, and after, but as far as fighting and winning it, I will stand on American exceptionalism.